Okay, so now now we're recording, and my voice is doing things. This is um, Tech Math three uh, pre calc, and it's day one. So that was good. Day one, and we're going to start at section uh, seven dash one. All right, keep the humor down on the front row. All right, you want me to respell calculus? C A L. There, is that better? Oh, we could do it this way, I suppose. Let's see. Um, yeah, we could do it that way. All right. 2 plus 2 equals 4. 3 plus 3 equals 6. Is that better? You like that better? That's good. Like, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. All right, so I guess we won't use that one. Yeah, that, that's the magic pen that's going to disappear. Yeah. Anybody know what sec chapter 7 is about anyway? Anybody? Oh, quadratic equations. Oh. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we're going to solve quadratic e equations. All right, so uh, we're going to do, we're either going to factor or we're going to factor. Those are our two choices. All right, that's good. Because this is section one. So if I have a times b and it's equal to zero, okay, so I got a times b and it's equal to zero. What can somebody tell me about a? Okay, it might be zero. M i g h t is that might might be zero. How about b? What can you tell me about b? It might be zero, yeah. but one of them has to be zero, right? Yeah. The only way a times b can be zero is if one of them is zero. Yeah. That's the only way. So it doesn't matter how complicated it is. x squared plus 3x plus 4 times 3 hyperbolic sine of 3x squared equals zero. Okay. Either this guy has to be zero, or that guy has to be zero. That's the only two cases in order for this to be the whole thing to be zero. One of them has to be zero. Like it. <laughs> no, definitely sense. not. All right, so that's that's the issue. It's even worse than usual. Yeah, well, that's pretty good. I've had a whole summer off. <laughs> <laughs> I, think oh, okay. I think your pen's lagging out, lagging out a little bit. Yeah, it must be. Problem number two. Okay, so we've got... 3x plus 1. And we've got um, x plus 5 is equal to 0. All right, so what do we know? We know that uh, 3x1 might be 0. 3x plus 1 might be 0. If it is, then we can pretty much say that x can be minus one third, right? And we can say that x plus five might be zero. And if that were the case, then x would have to be uh, minus five. Yeah. Is that prettier? All right. So we would probably skip both of those steps, right? And we would go directly to the answer. Well, not using that pen. X equals solution set minus one third. No, oh, we wouldn't do that. Minus five minus one third, right? Your your eighth grade math instructor would want to put the, the most negative guy first. But we'd probably do that by inspection, skipping the two steps in between. We'd look at this guy and say, well, x could be a minus 5, x would be um, minus 1 third. Okay. Or we could go and um, say, well, 
if x plus 5 were 0, I could subtract 5 from both sides, and I could have x is equal to minus 5. I could do that. And I could say 3x plus 1 could be 0. I can subtract 1 from each side. And I'd have 3x is equal to minus 1. And then I could divide both sides by 3 and have x is equal to minus 1 third. There's another possibility. I could put it in my calculator and tell it to solve. Right? This calculator is probably going to solve that guy, and I could just put it in and tell it to solve. Okay. Is that easy enough? All right, let's find a different one. Can you show us how to put it in the calculator? Yeah. Um, what a pain. All right. <laughs> open this. Open that. Put this guy up. Turn the light on. Okay. What do I? Is it Control Alt F7? Right. Control Shift F7. F Zoom. All right. We'll do number uh, four next. X squared. Number four, x squared uh, minus 9x plus 18. Now, there's more than one way to do this, but we are in chapter, we're in section 7.1. And in 7.1, the only way we do this is by factoring or by inspection. So I said, well, if I'm going to factor that, I'm going to need uh, an x there and an x over here. And uh, let's see, I, if I have 18, that could be 1 times 18, that could be 2 times 9, that could be 3 times 6. 3 and 6 is 9, right? Minus 3 minus 6. Now, all of that I would have done in my head. I wouldn't have written it down, um, but I, I could do that. And then um, x is equal to final answer. Final answer, boom. Um, three and six. Oh, uh, anybody know Miss Reed? My 12th grade math instructor? She taught me in Yeah, she probably she taught my mom. So it's. Um, Anyway, she would not have liked that bracket, I tell you right now. But that bracket's good. This guy over here is pretty bad. All right, number four. Um, guess we'll do six next. Number six. X squared equals. Um, hmm, hmm. X plus 24. 42, x plus 42. All right. Thank you very much for having the wrong eraser out. Okay, well, um, I'm in the wrong form. So I go x squared minus x minus 42. And then I'd ask myself the awesome question, uh, how do I get a 42? Let's see, 1 times 42, 2 times... 21, 3 times um, 14, 14, 6 times, 6 times 8, 7 times 8, that's better, 7 times 8, and I said 7 and 8, that's, you guys aren't any help. 6 times 7. 42. And I said, well, gee, these guys are one apart. X minus 7. X plus 6 equals 0. I then check my work and say, um, I 
Oh, very good. So minus 7 times 6, 42, minus 7x plus 6x minus 1, x times x, x squared. So my work checks, and then I would do something clever, x. And I put the minus 6 first, because I, I, you know, I'm going to put it in alphabetical order. Because I put it in order, ascending oh, order. Now, now what if um, I didn't? Let's say I put seven fur. What, what's the problem? Shouldn't it be negative seven? Let's negative six and seven. Okay. If it, if it were negative seven, right? Then minus seven minus seven does not make zero. It makes fourteen. So I have a 14 there, and then I'd have 14 times 13. That's not zero, so it's not a positive sum. So the issue is x minus 7 has to be zero, right? So I'm going to add 7 to both sides. x equals 7. Okay, good enough. Yeah, but I would. I now uh, I'm doing my final exam, and I put seven comma minus six. Am I going to mark that wrong? Definitely not. Okay. But from from sixth grade on, you're told to put to put your answers in ascending order, and you should put them in ascending order to honor your seventh grade math instructor. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. That's the only reason. That's the only reason, right. Now, Miss Reed died of breast cancer about 10 years ago in Shenandoah. But she taught me in Benton Harbor, Michigan, and it's all her fault. Okay, we're going to do number 12 next. So number 12. Um, 14 x squared plus 5x um, hmm. minus 24. Minus 24 equals 0. All right. And I'm going to factor this. Isn't that lovely? So I, I'm going to ask myself, how do I make a 14? 1 times 14, 2 times 7, 7 times 2, 14 times 1. Okay, so that's what has to sit in front of that X guy that's going to sit there and it's going to sit there. How do I make a 24? 1 times 24 minus minus 2 times 12, minus 3 times 8, minus 4 times 6, and um, then it would be 6 times 4. I could have a minus 6 times 4, a minus 8 times 3, a minus 12 times 2, a minus 24 times 1, and I could have the, I could have it either way. All right, in any event, I need a 5. Okay, so how am I going to get a 5? <coughs> okay. So I'm going to use these guys here and those guys there to get my 5. That's my plan. 2, 7. Minus 3, um, we'll make it plus 3. Plus 3 for a 21, minus 8 for a minus 16, giving me 5. Okay, so that, that's how I would do that. And um, some of you might think that that's trial by error. Is it not? You, you know, you do each one. Now, that my mind works a little differently, and I got to pick the first 
ones the first time doesn't mean that my mind didn't go and race through the other numbers before I picked those two out, right? No, the five's going to be positive. Twenty-one x. So I've got I've got twenty-one x, the middle terms, and I have minus sixteen. So that's going to be a, a positive five x. Yeah. Now uh, what may have been confusing is that that times sort of looks like there's a negative sign sitting in front of that three. All right, back. We don't have the final answer yet, right? So final answer. X equals hmm, minus three halves minus three halves um, plus eight sevenths. Eight sevenths. Okay, good enough. Again, I could have done that in my calculator if I wanted to, but I would have had to change my, um, oh no, I could have just put that directly in my calculator and it would have told me what it was if I uh, chose to do it that way. Okay, well, I'm supposed to back down. All right, we're going to do number 20. And then we're going to say that we're done with um, this particular section, number 20. I have um, 4x squared equals 9. Am I going to try to factor that? Probably not. I'm going to say um, x squared is 9 over 4. And then I'm going to take the square root of that and the square root of this. And I'm going to say x is equal to plus or minus uh, 3 halves. I recognize um, the square root of 9 I recognize as 3 and the square root of 2 I recognize as 2. And, uh, that's how I would do that. Plus or minus, because I have a, an x squared term. If I square a positive guy, I get a positive guy. If I square a negative guy, I still get a positive guy. OK, section 7.2 we skip, which is completing the square. And we skip it because we have to cover it completely and totally later on in other sections. So we'll come back and get it then. Um, section 7.3 has to do with quadratic formula. Now, there's two different quadratic formulas. If I have a squared plus b, a squared x, a, oh. huh? What, where? What are you complaining about? You're complaining about being where? Yeah, 7, 3. That's what I said. Didn't I say 7, 3? All right, so if I have ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero, then ever since about eighth grade, you've known that x is going to be minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. And that's called the quadratic formula. And uh, maybe you remember that, maybe you don't. What the math people have been holding in abeyance until you're a graduate student is the half quadratic formula. And the, the half quadratic formula says that if I have an equation that's ax squared plus 2bx plus c is equal to 0. If I, if I have that, then x is going to be minus b plus or minus <coughs> the square root of b squared minus 
AC divided by A. Now, what that does for you, because I'm, I'm putting these things in my calculator anyway and getting three or four significant digits out of it, that cuts down the amount of operations you have to do. If the, the number in front of the x term is even, you can, you can just divide it by 2 and say it's 2b, put it into this simpler equation, and have a better chance of your calculator giving you the right answer. So any, anytime you can remove calculations from your calculator, um, the better off you're going to be. Okay, so when, when I have a, a situation where the, the, the guy in front of the x is even, I use the half quadratic formula. And when I have it, when it's not even, then I use the regular quadratic formula. And if all you do is use the regular one all the time, and you ignore me completely on the half guy, it's not going to break my heart. Okay, that's not going to break my heart. And in fact, the first time I saw this, uh, the half quadratic formula was in a complex variable graduate school class at UNO. And I raised my hand and told the guy I was doing it wrong. Okay, because we the, the square root of b squared minus 4a, we call that the discriminant because it's discriminating between whether I have a rational number, an irrational number, an imaginary number. And he said that, that it was really square root of b squared minus ac, and I, I told him he was wrong. And he explained to me 15 minutes later that, that uh, I had not been brought up properly by my math people. The math he, department was hiding it. He blew your mind. Well, that was one thing he did, yeah. Okay, so now we only need to make it to problem number 21 this time. So we'll look at number 2 again. Um, x squared. Number 2. x squared plus 10x plus 21 is equal to 0. Now, clearly what we would do is we'd see if we can factor that, right? Because if we can factor it, why would we want to do anything else? Because that'd be the simplest, right? So I have an x, I have an x. 21 is 1 times 21 is two ti 3 times 7, and that's all it is. And there's no way, wait a minute, I can make this plus 3, plus 7, and I know the answer, and I, I'm done. x is equal to minus 7 minus 3. Uh, is that correct? No, I'm in section 7, 3. I have to use the quadratic formula. Bummer. I, the world is just so terrible. I have, so I have to use it, right? So I'm going to use the whole quadratic formula and say x is equal to um, minus 10 plus or minus the square root of 10 squared minus 4 times 1 times 21 divided by 2. And then I'm going to use the half quadratic formula and say x is equal to minus 5 plus or minus the square root of 5 squared minus 1 times 21 divided by 1. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. No, I'm not. And then I'm going to say x is equal to uh, minus 10 plus or minus um, 100 minus 84 is 16, the square root of 16 is 4, divided by 2, so that implies I've got a minus 7 and a minus 3. And over here, I've got um, minus 5, plus or minus 25, minus 21, which is 4, the square root of 4 is 2, so plus or minus 2, and I'm going to end up with a minus 7 or a minus 3. So I get the same answer all three ways.
but I'm in I'm in section 7-3, so I should be using the quadratic formula. On a test, I would not. I would fa if I can factor it, I'd factor it first because that's the easiest thing to do. Okay, now we're looking at um, look at number eight. That looks fun. Number eight. 20x squared minus 30x minus 200 is equal to 0. What? I'm only doing even. You guys are doing the odds. Yeah. Okay. So when we turn on homework, do you grade us on the evens too? No. The, syla the syllabus has problems to be done in it. They're all odd. On Wednesday, the, the studious student, which of course that isn't the front row, would have done the Monday problems already, and if they had problems with them, would ask me about them, right? Yeah. Well, that's not you, so I wouldn't worry about it. All right, so I got this problem. Am I going to solve this problem? No, this is a dumb problem, right? The yeah. numbers are too big. Let's just get this one. I'm going to go and I'm going to divide everything by 10. Okay. Right? I'm going to solve 2x squared minus 3x minus 20 is equal to 0. And whether or not I can keep my fingers off my smart board or not, I'm not sure. That's, that's the problem I'm going to solve. Um, I do a quick look to see if I can factor that, and well, maybe I can, maybe I can't. It's hard to say, um, but it looks like it might be too difficult to try to factor. So I'm going to say x is equal to minus a minus 3, also known as a plus 3 for those that were wondering, plus or minus the square root of minus 3 squared minus 4 times 2 times minus 20 divided by 2 times 2, also known as 4. So some of that I wouldn't write down. I, I would write down that it's 4 on the bottom, right? I'd probably do that. So I've got uh, 3 plus or minus square root of 9 plus 8, 160, 160 divided by 4. Okay, I see um, 3 plus or minus the square root of 169 divided by 4. I recognize 169 as 13 squared, 3 plus or minus 13 over 4. All right, and then I can write down the answer. Uh, if it's plus, 4 goes into 16, I get a 4, right? And if it's minus, I get a minus 10. So that'd be 5 halves minus 5 halves. And that's how I would I would do that problem. And um, I, uh, th this guy could have been factored, I but I'm in the section that does quadratic formulas, so that's what I did. Um, let's look at number 20. Oh, what a pain! <laughs> I don't know about number 20. Number 20. Um, and this guy can be put right in your calculator if you wanted to. You know is. There's no technical reason why you have to be bothered by the stupidity of this problem that obviously is going to take too long anyway, right? It's not a matter of four. What? Who? That's 59. Yeah. Is it different in your book? No, I don't have the book. Oh, okay. Actually, it's a plus well, three, 3 doesn't go into all these things, right? So I can't divide by 3. So that means 
I, I can factor it. Is 59 a prime number? I don't know. 59 might even be a prime number. Anyway, so x is equal to minus or minus 15. Plus or minus square root of minus 15 squared minus 4 times 9 times minus 59. Now I'm going to do that in my head. I, I, I can just see that now. 2 times 9 goes on the bottom. All right, so x is going to be uh, 15 plus or minus the square root of 2, 2, 5 plus. And of course, this thing is solar powered, which means I have no light up here, so there's no way it's going to be working. All right, I'm good. All right, so 4 times 9 times 59. 2,124. All right, 2,124 divided by 18. All right, 15 plus or minus. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to add, where's my add button? Add 225. Is 15 squared 225? Yeah. If it's not, we're, we're pretty bad off. Square root of 2, 3, 4, 9 divided by 18. Anybody know off the top of their head the square root of 2, 3, 4, 9? Yeah, I didn't think so. Okay, so 48.5. 48 48 yeah. So square root of the answer, way to go. Square root of the answer. Where's the answer anyway? There it is. Go on. 48.46648326. Yeah, sure. 48.466. 4826 divided by 18. Now, how many significant digits are we going to keep in our final answer? Three. Two. two. We're only going to keep two because we only had two in the original problem. In fact, we only have one in the original problem if we really wanted to do that. So we're only going to keep two anyway. So we're probably not going to keep all those numbers. All right, well, we're ready to write down the final answer. So, um, final answer, x is equal to, all right, so we're going to go 15 minus the answer divided by 18. Um, minus 1.8. We'll make it 1.86. All right, and then we're going to go positive 15 plus 48.46648, and we're going to divide that by 18, and we're going to get 3.52. And we're going to say, well, better answer. Better answer. X is equal to minus 1.9 and 3.5. Because we really only have two significant digits, so we should probably only keep two. Okay, good enough? If you say it is. Alright, good enough. Moving on to section 8-1. 8-1. What's that about? Eight, one. Well, you don't want to move slow. I mean, this is the afternoon. Seven. Any questions? Exponent. Okay. So finally, in, in section 8-1, we get to rules. 
right? And so we have rules, and we say, well, if I have a to the m, now only a math major would use m and m's, right? m and m, then, I, then that's going to be a to the m plus n. So if I have a common base, I add the exponents. That's what that's saying. And if I have a m divided by a n, <laughs> those don't look common base to me, that would be a to the m minus n, but a can't be 0, because I can't divide by 0 yet. Will I ever be able to divide by 0? Sure. Yeah, in chapter 23 or so, we'll be dividing <laughs> by 0. No problem. Not a, not a problem. Who's laughing over there? Casey. Yeah, typical. Bunch of naysayers here, I tell you. Three. Well, um... Newton, Isaac Newton invented calculus. What? Isaac Newton invented calculus. When he did, he knew he was dividing by zero. And um, he taught the calculus to four of his closest colleagues. He put in his will that no one could tell anybody about it for 50 years after his death. It wasn't until 50 years after Newton's death that his colleagues released Newton's calculus. And it was, in fact, dividing by zero. At the time, we're talking about the 16th century, uh, who controlled academia? Church. Church. The church. Dividing by zero would not only not be allowed, but it would be an excommunicatable uh, offense. So to come up with a math where you divided by zero standing on the corner side and saying this is it would require the church to excommunicate you. The church excommunicating you would send you directly to hell after your death. You had now no, no chance of salvation. He knew that. That's why he delayed 50 years because he figured that in 50 years it'd be one place or the other. You know, they wouldn't be waiting for the church to act, right? It worked, but a German guy developed calculus after his death and before the 50 years was up. We do it the German way. It wasn't until 1820 that a French guy came up with a way to do calculus and allow the dividing by zero to be okay. okay. What he did is he went and said, well, say, so I, I have A divided by zero. Bad. Bad, 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 bad student. <sighs> limit, limit as B pro approaches zero of A over B. Oh, good student, you're not dividing by zero anymore. That's what the Frenchman did in 1820 and took the calculus from an excommunicatable offense type math to mainstream math where I'm not dividing by zero anymore. Now that, that's oversimplified simplified there, but that basically is what happened. All right, back to our rules. Where, what am I doing here anyway? Back to um, rule number three. A to the M times N. Now, what we're doing in chapter eight is we're having you um, add and subtract, multiply, and divide again. That's all we're doing. We're doing it with exponents, but all we're doing is, say, we, we don't do adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing as a chapter thingy, but here we have to do it, and that's, that's what we're doing. Right, so this would be a m times n. All right. And we'll, we'll go back to rule six. a to the zero is one. So, so a, any, anything raised to the zero power is one. So that begs the issue is zero raised to the zero power. What is that? One, yeah. No, it's not. A can't be zero. Okay, so for rule, for rule six. No, I ran out of room for four and five. Yeah. 
But I mean, I figure that's good enough. You don't have to know that. Okay. You want me to put those two down? I'd have to erase something. All right. Yeah, of course. Four. All right. So there's rule five. There's rule four. All right. Guys, anyway. Can't get away with squat up here. All right. So A, B, raised to the N is A to the N, B to the N. And um, A divided by B raised to the N is uh, A to the N over B to the N. Uh, but B can't be 0, because I can't divide by 0 yet. Or ever, depending on how you look at it. You could look at it either way. And then we have an unnumbered rule. A to the minus M is uh, 1 over A to the m. So those are my exponent rules. Guess what happens after exponent rules? Yeah. Radical rules, right? Yeah, right? Radical rules will come next. All right. So now we're in, um, we're looking at the homework problems. And uh, no one complained that this is not 9. You know, I just thought I'd point that out. Right, I'm looking at number 2. Now what are we supposed to do? Simplify. It's homework? Number 2. So here we go, number two, um, c to the fourth times c to the sixth, and the rule says I add them, c to the tenth. So I add the exponents, I get c to the tenth. Uh, number six, z cubed cubed z to the 6. No. Z to the ninth. Yes. 3 times 3 is 9. Yeah. Because see, this is Z cubed times Z cubed times Z cubed. 3 plus 3 plus 3 is 9. Z 9. All right. Move down. Move down to 16. <laughs> 7 minus 2 times 7 minus 1. I'm going to add the exponent 7 minus 3. Good student or bad student? Bad student. We don't leave our answers in negative exponents. 1 over 7 cubed. Your 8th grade math instructor did not allow you to keep your exponents negative, right? Yeah. Or was it 6th grade? I forget. One or the other. Yeah, 4th grade for you? Yeah. My mother... Yeah, my mother decided that she's going to clean up her house a little bit. So she made piles of our of our uh, our grades that we got from high school and jun and junior high and elementary school and gave it to her children to get them out of the house so she wouldn't have to throw them away later. And I got straight B's in eighth grade math. So I know that. straight B's two to the fourth. Because of course the teacher only gave A is to females. I did not miss a problem on any test in that entire class. The instructor instructions were, do all your math in pencil. All my math was always done in ink because I didn't make mistakes. And so I got B's because I did not follow instructions. Okay, so this would be 2 to the minus 8th. And I'm not going to leave it that way. I'm going to have to go 2 to the 8th. Yeah, now you know where that comes from, right? Doing now you know. And don't erase. Yeah. I could. Yeah, I could have done it that way, but I didn't. You want to simplify that moment? Two to the eighth? What, what can be simpler than two to the eighth? I mean, you, um, you could call it, let's say, you could call it one over four to the fourth. You could do that, or you could call it 
uh, 1 over 8 squared. I, you, know, you could do that, I suppose. Or you could call it 1 over 64, I suppose. You could do all, but I don't, whatever, you know. But no, 1 over to the 8, that's, okay, the, the, the issue is, what is the simplest form of, of that problem? So, what we do is we open up a new program called Maple. And Maple, yeah, Maple here says, it used to say in a previous version that this is the power of a thousand mathematicians. Yeah, that's what it used to say. Okay, so I'm going to go. I'm going to go to. What was the problem anyway? Anybody remember? Number 16? 18? Okay, 2 to the 4th. 2 to the 4th. Okay. Raised. Raised 2. That's not raised 2. Raised 2 to minus 2. Okay. So I've got it. In, yeah, for a mere $128, you can buy one of these. And. Um, 1 over 256. Yeah, I would not do that. But uh, yeah, you could you could do that. I wouldn't mark it wrong. Yeah. No, I don't want you to do that because that's way too much work. Why would I want you to buy a maple program to do your homework? <laughs> okay, I know it's hard to believe, but the well, wait a minute. That class is fast. That clock is fast, right? We still, yeah, we still have another, it's only 2.18. We still have another seven minutes. Oh, isn't this great? Let's do, that's why we only go to 2.25. Oh, I thought it was 225 plus the guy take care of No. Well, that was a cheap shot. I know. Okay, we'll solve one more problem, and then we'll go home whether you want to or not. All right, it's number 40. All right, so I've got 3B squared minus 4 b to the minus 6 minus 2b. That is problem number 40. Okay, so I've got 2 minus 6 plus 1. B to the minus 3. To the minus 3. I got 3 times 4 for 12 times 2 for 24. I have two minus signs. 24. Good enough? Why you got minus 3 on the exponent? 2 minus 6. So negative 4. So the question from the front row, why do I have 2 minus 6 plus 1? Why am I not calling that 4? Is that the question from the front row? This is my front row are my straight guys. They, they keep me straight. All right, so this is 3. Okay. See you Wednesday. See you Wednesday. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs>